It's Friday, October 22nd, 2010, and you're watching This Week in Linux News. There were quite a few milestone releases this week for Linux distributions, including Linux Mint 10's release candidate. If you'd like to know more about that, I've already created a video this week showing off some of the new features, so check for that in the doobly-doo. In addition, Frugalware, the Slackware-based distribution that uses Pac-Man as a package manager, released their 1.4 Pre-1 technical preview release. Chakra GNU Linux released their 0.3 Beta 1 version. And Partis Linux 2011 Beta released. The majority of these just contain software updates, but I will include links to all of them in the show notes, which you can find in the doobly-doo. Make sure to read over those if you are interested. Hot on the heels of Ubuntu 10.10's release, 11.04's development has already started. There are a couple of changes that have already been made. They have moved to a compiler version 4.5 of GCC. The main difference with this, as far as I can tell, is it has two architectures that are not maintained quite as well. This could go along with the phasing out of the versions of i586 and earlier that Ubuntu is planning to do. Not entirely sure on that one. But the main focus for 11.04 appears to be more performance testing, not running the Xorg server as root, GNOME 3 packages being included, the, the newer kernel version 2.6.37, and some ButterFS file system improvements. And in a confusing turn of events, Oracle has released OpenOffice.org 3.3.0 Release Candidate 1. After the Document Foundation and LibreOffice split off from Oracle and from OpenOffice.org, it was kind of expected that Oracle may not continue developing it, but it looks like they're going to persevere and they're going to keep pushing out new code. Speaking of the Document Foundation, there was a bit of an announcement in the IRC channel for the OpenOffice.org Community Council that members of the Document Foundation that are on the OpenOffice Org Council need to vacate their positions or resign from the Document Foundation because it is a conflict of interest since they're technically a fork and competing project. What do you guys think of these council members being asked to resign their positions? Let me know in the comment section below or in a video response. And since we've talked a little bit about releases and stuff, we've had some web browser releases come out this week. Opera 11's alpha is now available. There are tons of bug fixes included in this, but the biggest feature that they seem to have added is the ability to use extensions, meaning they are finally joining the game with others like Chrome and Firefox and whatever else. They've got a series of tutorials and a getting started guide for those people that are interested in creating extensions of their own, so go ahead and check that out. In addition, Chrome 7 released this week. Like I said a few months ago, they're going to be releasing a new version very, very often at this point, so those numbers are going to continue to increase. Mainly, there were just a lot of bug fixes in this. They've improved HTML5 support. That's about it. No real big features have been added. Now, two things that did not show up in it, however, are the hardware acceleration and the tab pose features that were proposed. However, both of those features do appear to be available in the Chrome 8 developer release, though they may get pushed back to Chrome 9, although that's just going to be, what, a month or two from now? All right, let's talk about some Linux gaming news. Zero AD, a game we talked about just a little while back, had their Alpha 1 a few months ago. Now they've got an Alpha 2 out. There are a bunch of improvements to it already, including a new in-game UI, Fog of War, the ability for the camera to follow the units. They've got better pathfinding now, they've got health bars, they've got population limits, a ton of new features are available. I'm gonna be trying it out very soon and I recommend you do the same. There is of course already a PPA available for Ubuntu. If you would like to do that, I will have a link to the page describing how to do it in the show notes, which you can find in the doobly-doo. And since we're on the topic of gaming news, I mentioned last week that Angry Birds was being released to Android through their website for free, ad-supported. Well, within the first day, they had 1 million downloads. And since that time, they've surpassed the 2 million download mark and are getting very close to having 3 million downloads already. Now, like I said, this is free, so it is a little bit less impressive than if it were a paid app but it is ad supported, so this is a great thing for the developers, and it's a great thing for the community as well. But it does go to show that there is a demand for gaming on Android, and it does go to show how many people can sideload apps to their phones. And the final bit of news I'm gonna leave you with today, Verizon has finally announced the pricing and availability for the Samsung Galaxy Tab that's been announced for months and months now. Now, it was rumored that it was going to come out at a $399 subsidized price point through T-Mobile, but since it's Verizon that's going to have it initially, it's going to be $600, with a $20 a month data plan that gets you one gig of data per month only. I'm gonna have to pass on that one, sorry. There are still rumors that it will be coming to Sprint and T-Mobile with a $50 mail-in rebate on T-Mobile, 
at a subsidized price, but even still, $3.99 for something like that, a subsidized two-year contract, I'm not really sure that that's for me. What do you think about it? Do you think you'd like a Samsung Galaxy tablet? The specifications look pretty entertaining. If you want to know more about those, I've talked about them in previous videos. But that's all I've got for you today. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, check out my second channel, youtube.com slash twilltalks. I've been doing a daily vlog over there. And of course, that does let you know when I'm going to be missing videos or when something is coming, when something's not coming. But thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.